The entrance antiphon for Sunday in the 16th week in ordinary time. See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servant and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, <coughs> that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> And reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the tenebrae of, Mam of Mamre as he sat in the entrance of his tent. While the day was growing hot, looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, Please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that I may refresh yourselves. And afterwards you may go on your way. The men replied, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, Quick. Three measures of fine flour kneaded and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set these before the three men. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, Where is your wife Sarah? They replied, He replied, there in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song, He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. 
He who acts blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord, who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord, who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. One who does these things shall never be disturbed. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister, in accordance with God's stewardship given to me, to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past, but now it has been manifested to the holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Father. As we have dedicated this year to St. Joseph, we continue our studies concerning Blessed St. Joseph. Last week, month, if you remember, we looked at the seven sorrows of St. Joseph. This month, I wanted to continue with another aspect of sorrow for Joseph, but not sorrow in the way that we would normally think it, but in a way in which Joseph continues to lead as an example to all of us. And that has to do with the death of St. Joseph. Now, for the death of St. Joseph, we have to rely on our tradition, our oral tradition that was later written down because sacred scripture, for the most part, is silent concerning the death of St. Joseph. Now, we can read sacred scripture and we can understand by his not being present in the public life of Jesus as he starts his public ministry, that Joseph is most likely dead. We can come to this conclusion with two thoughts. The first is this. If you remember from Scripture, 
Mary, the mother of Jesus, is often recorded as accompanying him. Now, during the three years, how much did she accompany him? That we do not know. But we have instances where they speak of Jesus being in the presence of the crowd, his disciples, and being told, your mother is here, along with your kin, which would be your brothers and sisters, because there is, please understand, Mary had no other children, okay? She only had Jesus. She remained a virgin afterwards, never had relations with Joseph, never had relations with it. Mary only had one child, no relations. Now, whenever they're writing sacred scripture, there is no equivalent word for cousin, uncle, or aunt. That word, those equivalent words are not present. So whenever they are speaking of the <coughs> extended family, they just refer to them as brothers and sisters. So whenever they speak of Jesus and they say, you're Mary, your mother, your brothers and sisters are there, that's his mother and his kinfolk, okay? Now, we can learn a valuable thing. Here's step one from that, is that if Joseph had been alive, Mary would not be following Jesus. She would not be accompanying him. Why? Because she would be at home with her husband. It would be her role as wife and mother to take care of the family home, to provide for her husband, not only in the preparing of meals and the keeping of the, the house in order, but it's her presence. Because you know, you who are married, being a spouse is not just about doing a job. It's about being there completely, holistically to your other spouse. It's much more than just making a sandwich or bringing home a paycheck, okay? Mary would have been there with Joseph. That's the first thing that we could look at and go, well, that's a very good inclination that Joseph is not present any longer. The second would be this, if Mary accompanies Jesus in different parts, it would also be natural for Joseph, had he been alive, that he would accompany Jesus. And then you would have a different context with scripture, because they wouldn't be saying, Jesus, your mother and brothers, they would be saying, Jesus, your father is outside. Because the role of father in that time period in the Jewish society is extremely elevated as opposed to the role of mother. So Jesus would have always been seen as Joseph's son. So when you would have had these things, come up, it would have always been Jesus, Joseph, your father. And that, in essence, would have diminished the role of Mary that we would later come to theologically make more present, to understand her role as the new Eve, the queen mother from the Old Testament Jewish idea. So all of these things we would not, we would probably be very not likely to have a good understanding. But Joseph is gone. So we can have this development that comes up with Mary and theology. Now, I'm saying all of this because when Joseph would have passed, heaven would not have been open to Joseph. Although he is the foster father of Jesus, 
heaven is not open. It had been closed. The gates of heaven were closed and barred due to the insult given to God by mankind and witnessed in Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve sinned and disobeyed God, that shut the doors in that relationship. And we saw that symbolically written through the story of the garden. How when they left the garden, the gates were shut. And this is where it's neat to think about the beauty of the Catholic Church. If you remember probably from your childhood, or if you've ever gone and seen the old churches that were not touched with the changes of the Vatican Council II, like this one was. If you went to St. Bridget, you would have seen the old altar rail. Well, what was also there? A gate. Now, here's where the church, using symbols, is able to teach a theology, to teach sacred scripture, to help us understand. Before the service, the gates were barred. The priest, in the person of Jesus comes. He ascends. The gates are open. He ascends to the heavenly altar in the person of Jesus. And what does he do? He ascends to offer what? The sacrifice of Calvary. Everything that Jesus did in his life where he is laid to rest that he ascends to heaven, the gates are open, and he stays at the right hand of the Father, offering himself as the perpetual sacrifice for the sins of humanity. All that was present and viewed symbolically to every Catholic who went to church whenever they had a, a church with the altar rail and the gate. And that was just a way that they could teach so people who were not literate could understand, hey, this is something symbolic of what actually took place so long ago and what takes place every time the priest comes into the church to celebrate Mass. So what happens to Joseph and all the other holy just people if heaven is closed to them and they must wait until the Passion and death of Jesus, where when we say in the creed, he descended into hell, where they would have been at that time would have been called the limbo of the just. Now, that's an old term, the limbo of the just. It's not a place of suffering in the sense of pain, emotional, spiritual. No, it's a place of rest, where you're resting until heaven is open. So Joseph would have been there with all the other patriarchs and prophets and all holy and just men and women until his son, which we pray in the creed, he descended into heaven, until his son came and opened the gates of heaven through his sacrifice, his wounds, Joseph would have remained there, which is something phenomenal to comprehend, that Joseph is not given any preferential treatment. He's the foster father of Jesus, and he is not allowed any special privilege because of that. He must wait along with all the other ones. Whereas Jesus, being God, does not have to wait. He opens the gate. Mary, being the Immaculate Conception, free from sin due to the merits of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, he assumes her body and soul into heaven. She does not have to wait. Her body does not have to decay in a grave. Joseph, on the other hand, experiences 
experiences everything that you and I would experience. For like Joseph, when we die, many will experience a time of waiting. Not in a limbo of the just, but we would come to understand that as Catholics, as we would have to wait in a state of continued purgation. Oh my gosh, did Father Soche just speak about purgatory in a Catholic church? Yes. <coughs> yes, I did. Because sadly, sad, very, very sadly, very sadly, and it, it's, a, it's a shame and a crime that there are Catholic priests <coughs> And nuns who try to convince people that purgatory is no longer in existence. That is a crime and a shame. They need to be taken out back and given a lesson with Jesus. The reason I'm saying that is because it diminishes a very important thing. When Joseph and the just Hear me out, please. When Joseph and the just waited for Jesus, what did they do? They prayed. They prayed for the coming of the Messiah, and they prayed for people who were still alive, still working to become just. When the soul dies today, I mean, not so. When the person dies today, and let us say their time, their purgation, which they began here on earth, is not reached its full completion, <coughs> because as we know and believe firmly, sin cannot reside in heaven. There is no sin present in heaven. So even the smallest, most minute stain of sin cannot be in heaven. And if some of us die with that small, most minute stain of selfishness, of sinfulness upon our soul, then we must wait for that to be purged. <coughs> so as we wait in that state of purgatory, what do we do? We do like St. Joseph and so many other just people, we pray. <coughs> if the remedy to selfishness is selflessness. We cannot be selfless in a physical way once we're dead. We can't clothe the naked, give food to the hungry, and perform other corporal works of mercy. What we can do is pray. And that's why when the church speaks of the three groups of the church, the church militant, us still alive, the church triumphant, the angels and the saints in heaven. It also speaks of the church suffering. Those who, after death, continue that state of purgation. And that is why we are encouraged to pray for them, that their time being purged, that continued state, will go by quicker. <coughs> Now, there was the old things where people would say, well, we pray to get 367 days off in purgatory. No one knows what a day off in purgatory is or what a day is once you're dead. That's totally not to the point. But the point is we should, not just in the month of November when we remember the souls to just, but we should every day pray for them. Not only pray for those that we have lost, our own family and friends, because we have no guarantee they may be in heaven at this moment. But we should pray for them daily. And we should pray for those who have nobody to pray for them. As they are daily praying for us. At every moment, they're praying for us. That we can be saintly people here on earth. That we can repent of our own sins and go to heaven. So whenever we diminish that, whenever we canonize people at their funerals, whenever we dissuade you from praying from the dead, praying for people in the state of purgation, my God, think about that. 
context. Someone you love, you could pray for. And I would have the audacity to stand in the pulpit and say, oh, no, don't pray for them. You would think me mad. Cruel. Pray. Ask St. Joseph to pray for them as well. And that's what we can learn from his death. He was not afforded special treatment. He waited and prayed. For many of us, after we die, we may not go straight to heaven. We may have to also wait and pray. So let us today and every day say a little prayer to St. Joseph for those who are currently still waiting and praying. <clears throat> Let us pray that there will always be people like us <clears throat> to pray for them. Because you don't want the fact that one day when we pass, nobody's there to pray for us. We'll leave it there. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs>
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you through the earth and work of human hands who will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God, Lord. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, who through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept it for the <coughs> sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each is offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through be made all things, whom he sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you, holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the ages and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, holy the Lord, the font of all holiness. Most holy Lord, one of these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Lord of God, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of your eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Not to save his commanded form, but the divine teaching we dare to say. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious, but grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, to await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. 
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have communed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is in the Go in peace. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us your God. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man.